Well, the U.S. Supreme Court announced Monday it will take up a major pro-life challenge in Mississippi later on this year. Church Milton reporter Martina Moiski has more in this report. And the president and the vice president are devoted to ensuring that every American has access to health care, including reproductive health care. The Biden administration is again supporting abortion. The Supreme Court is planning to hear Dobbs v. Jackson Women's Health Organization, which involves a 2018 Mississippi law banning most abortions after 15 weeks. I'm sorry that the White House press secretary said what she did today, especially since Joe Biden is Catholic. Biden's defense of abortion is a major shift from the Trump administration. It is my profound honor to be the first president in history to attend the March for Life. During just four years in office, he got three pro-life judges on the nation's highest court. Neil Gorsuch in 2017, Brett Kavanaugh in 2018, and Amy Coney Barrett in 2020. Abortion activists claim if the high court upholds Mississippi's pro-life law, it will peel back decades of legal precedent, beginning with the 1973 Supreme Court ruling Roe v. Wade. It is absolutely a challenge that goes straight to the heart of Roe and uh, in doing so threatens to overturn 50 years of precedent. It could spell the death knell for Roe v. Wade with the hopes of eventually kicking all abortion laws back to the states. Pro-lifers are hopeful as the court has a six to three conservative majority, but there's always concern about turncoats siding with the left to uphold the killing of unborn children. It's expected to be an uphill battle. Chief Justice John Roberts, a Catholic nominated by George W. Bush, sided with liberals last June to block a pro-life law in Louisiana. So we seem to see this time and again, William, just all these Catholic politicians coming out and not living their Catholic faith when it comes to the abortion matter. Why is that? I, I, it's just absolutely pathetic. I mean, you, you, well, you have to distinguish. Obviously, there's the ones who completely say they're Catholic, but they're clearly not. Uh, mm -hmm. Joe Biden and mm -hmm. uh, Tim Kaine in Virginia, and there's, you know, there's a million of them. Um, so there's that type. And then there's the ones who you think are are Catholic, but then they make these rulings that are totally not Catholic. So I don't know if they, I don't know, I mean, I don't know if they, if they feel, they feel pressured or they're scared or what, or they don't really believe or, I don't know. Is it possible with John Roberts that he really is just trying to embody the completely unbiased judgeship? Like, is that something that's kind of panned out uh, in his rulings or? I mean, that no. could be too, but even there, there's a problem because he loses either way there uh, on the question of integrity mm -hmm. because it's kind of like Kennedy saying, you know, I, don't, I won't let my Catholic, my, ca my, ca my Catholicism influence my policies. Mm -hmm. Well, then something's really off here because if you don't say that you're the deepest part of what you believe your worldview mm -hmm. is not going to affect how you govern mm -hmm. something's really off there yeah. and uh and if you you know so you're choosing the state over your faith i mean mm -hmm. and obviously there's a huge difference i'm not saying like obviously the state wouldn't wouldn't uh, put into law that you have to believe in the trinity or something mm -hmm. like that but things like like on abortion i mean this is natural law as well so mm -hmm. your faith yeah. should just yeah that's what the constitution that. was founded on right. was natural law yeah. a belief in judeo-christian values yeah. so you would think that anything that comes up before for the high court would be in complete accordance with the Constitution because yeah. it's divinely ordained. Exactly right. It's written all over our Constitution. So uh, let's look at other eff efforts around the country. I mean, we have a lot of stuff uh, coming out of Texas today. Uh, they, uh, Governor Abbott signed the Heartbeat Act. So we're having a lot of good pro-life laws yeah. just pop up around the country that are looking to challenge Roe. What do you think comes next? Say, you know, the Supreme Court, you know, takes this case and decides, okay, you know, we're going to strike down this uh, bad prior decision as they've done before with issues sure. like uh, you know, slavery and sure. segregation. Uh, so they have, com yeah, they completely have the right to say, okay, you know, abortion's no longer this misnomer law of the land and decide, okay, we're going to kick back to the states. What happens then in your mind? I mean, depending if they say, if they do it like that and they kick it, and then it gets kicked back to the states, I think you'll see what you already see. Those mm -hmm. states that are pushing really hard for pro-life legislation are mm -hmm. going to be extremely pro-life. And those who are pushing really hard in the opposite direction are going to be really strong in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. So New York, for example, under Cuomo especially, that's going to be like a, you know, death center of the United States. California is going to be a death center of the mm -hmm. United States. Uh, but other places that you go will not be right down, mm -hmm. especially down south and uh, things like that. So, But it'll be certainly be interesting in the next 10 years or so, if it ever does pan out that way, to see what the population shifts look like in all the, uh, the various states. I mean, you're going to have 
pro-life states, you know, reproducing, you know, hopefully living a more moral lifestyle if we are able to embrace our values at a more localized level rather than having everything standardized across the nation. And then I just see the population drop in places like New York and California where people are already fleeing. That's I right. mean, New York and California lost electoral colleges just from people leaving their states because of the policies. Imagine what, how much worse it could be if uh, they're not, you know, reproducing at a higher level. That's true. I mean, liberals in general, if they got everything they wanted in liberal places, mm -hmm. they'd eventually, their numbers would be so small. Mm -hmm. They contracept, they abort, they whatever. And in conservative places, they're having bigger families and everything else. So yeah, that's mm -hmm. an interesting point. You would definitely have population growth. And, and yeah, just places. the lack of security and everything that comes with these bad policies where it's like, okay, we're going to let in illegal immigrants. It doesn't matter if they have felonies, have assaulted people. I mean, we see it across the country. You know, people who don't mind the rule of law, mm -hmm. you know, tend to com uh, tend to commit more crimes. I mean, they're already breaking a you know an international law of crossing the borders, and then so you're expecting, oh, other than that, they're going to obey everything else. It just doesn't That's seem ridiculous. to make much, much. Most sense. people who are law abiding contribute to society. Those who are not take yeah. away from it. They're leeches, really. They do things the right way. Right. Exactly.